On July 21st, 2013, Karen Savage, Tom Hutchings, and John Wathen flew the pipeline from Pascagoula, Mississippi to Mobile, Alabama. The first thing that struck me in Pascagoula was the lack of storm surge protection for these holding cells and refineries. Another storm like Camille or Katrina could completely inundate this area. As we crossed over Highway 90, the close proximity to residences became apparent. It seemed to take radical angles to avoid some structures while going right by the front door of others. As we continued toward Mobile, I couldn't help but notice how many wetlands we were passing through and the vast amount of wet spaces. Inspecting and maintaining a pipeline in this environment would be nearly impossible. Any kind of leak or spill in this area would be problematic to deal with and devastating for the environment. As we crossed over Interstate 10, I was once again reminded of the close proximity of the residences to this pipeline. Some of these homeowners were forced to sell by threat of eminent domain. It took severe angles and radical changes of direction to avoid some structures, while it seemed like they went right through the front door of others, all the while claiming that it was impossible to change the path of it to avoid the watershed that feeds drinking water to Mobile. Here you see a new subdivision being built right along the side of the pipeline. I wonder if any of these new homeowners will be warned of what they have right outside their doors. Hard angles were used to avoid the power line substations and any commercial interest that was along the way. But they claimed they couldn't go around the tributary to Big Creek Lake, Mobile's drinking water source. The intake for that water is less than a half a mile from the right-of-way. The pipeline right-of-way is in the foreground with the lake at the top. Here you see the intake pump house on Big Creek Lake, Mobile's drinking water source. The oil pipeline will be crossing less than a half a mile from here. It will actually cut right through a headwater tributary just upstream from the intake. One leak could be catastrophic for all of the people in Mobile depending on this lake. Anyone who doesn't think it's possible should ask the people of Mayflower, Arkansas what they went through. This is what's known as a 10-mile storage facility owned by Plains All-American. Leaving the 10-mile storage facility, we flew southeast along the existing Plains All-American pipeline toward downtown Mobile. This is the area where they want to build the new storage tank facility. Note the close proximity to downtown Mobile and the housing development across the street. Directly across the river is where they want to expand the tank farm at Ark Blakely. Today, Canadian tar sands is already being shipped from this facility. It is already known that tar sands oil is being shipped via Canadian National Railroad to Arc Saraland where there's already trouble on the ground. These two leaking tank trucks have been here so long that they're visible on Google Earth. From here it's transported by truck to Arc Blakely Terminal, offloaded and stored then loaded onto ships for transport to local and offshore refineries. What are the true risks to Mobile citizens? And are those risks acceptable?